let's start off. So I'm going to cover most likely just from a time perspective four chapters. We're going to dig in. There's a lot of meat here. Um, there's a lot of good meat here we're going to talk a little bit about today. And uh, so I'm going to talk about Isaiah 41 through Isaiah 44. Um, discuss a little bit about what's happening there. Um, we already know a little bit of how we got there. I'll talk a little bit about that. But I, I, I want to leave this with you. Then we'll pray to open up. Fear not. Say that with me. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. So that is the title. That's kind of what we're going to talk about through all the scriptures that we read. Just remember that as we're reading some of these interesting scriptures, we still need to fear not. And that's in all these four chapters. That's kind of the underlining theme of those that I found to be um, in those books. So I'm going to pray, then I'll have somebody else close it up. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to, to study your word, to, to communicate, to laugh about it, to talk about it, to grow and learn about it together. And that we each get, are able to give our own experiences with you and through you. Uh, during these times. Dear Lord, I pray right now that you speak through me, that your, your scripture, your word is alive during this session. Dear Lord, and that each one of us walk away with something that you want us to remember about you and to remember about how you were there for us and that we will fear not as we move forward into our daily routines and your purpose and your destiny upon our lives. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay. So I said we're going to start off with uh, Isaiah 40, 41. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about, so open up your scriptures. I'm going to have a few of you read some of the various scriptures um, as we go through. I'm um, just trying to get to this a little disclaimer, you know, so. Isaiah, he's full of prophecies. He's full of predictions. There's, there's in these scriptures, predictions filled and prophecies unfilled. And he's talking about Christ and the Messiah in, his, in, this, um, in these four chapters here. And we'll talk a little bit about that. And what does Christ mean and how God is to us during these scriptures. Um, Israel enjoyed a special privilege of being God's people. I mean, it's amazing uh, of how much privilege and blessing they had, right? And they kept throwing it to the curve every time, he, every time he turned around. And you'll hear a little bit about that in the scriptures. Um, they were God's people. They were created and formed by God. They were redeemed by him. They were rescued by him. Um, one of the challenges here for the Israel, and it came out in some of the other, other chapters that we read previous to this, is that they were enslaved, gotten out, and enslaved again. So they're, they're looking in this, reading into this, and there's a few scriptures that talk about it. You have the Syrians in the north. You have the Cyrus on the east. They're in the park, and they're dealing with Babylon, um, lording over them. So the part is, who is next to overtake us or who is next to free us? I don't know. I mean... God, I mean, God punishes us, then he rescues us, and then punishes us again. So we've gotten there, and we'll continue to get there and through Isaiah and some of what's happening. How many of you have seen kind of that scenario in some of the scriptures? That, and, the, and, and I know Nathaniel has because he's read it and preached them and, and talked about it. But how many have seen that through some of the scriptures that, hey, they're punished and then rescued and then punished again? You know, so that's kind of what's happening yeah. here in uh, chapter in chapter forty one through forty four. And we'll we'll pinpoint a few a few things in that as we go through it. Um, but through this all, through this all, um, we cannot waver, and Israel shouldn't waver on their responsibility to do what God has asked them to do. Their trust and their honor for God, but they're struggling with that. Because they're looking out on all sides. They've got people, you know, if they're taken over by Babylon who serve other gods. They're intermixing. They're listening to that culture. They're still kind of oppressed. 
They, they've been through Egypt years ago. I mean, every time that there's outward influences trying to crush and trying to take them out of their knowledge and understanding for God, but God still is there for them. So it's kind of interesting as we read and go through this. Um, so if we, if we look at the first through, so I want somebody to read Isaiah 41, 1 through 3. Who would like to do that for us? And then we'll jump through 10. I got it. I got it. Right, listen in, Go ahead. <laughs> listen in silence before me, you lands beyond the sea. Bring your strongest arguments. Come now and speak. The court is ready for your case. Who has stirred up this king from the east, rightly calling him to God's service? Who gives this man victory over many nations and permits him to trample their kings underfoot? With, the, with his sword, he re, reduces armies to dust. With his bow, he scatters them like chafe before the wind. He chases them away and goes on safely, though he is walking over unfamiliar ground. So there's a lot there. See what he's saying. So keep signs before me. And he's talking about old islands, those that are on the remote, um, the remote uh, distances away from where they're at. You're talking about Asia Minor comes into play. You also have some of these other areas, Egypt, and, and talking about all, all these areas. It says, keep signs before the Lord, old islands, a different verse, and let the people renew their strength. So why, why wouldn't they be strong? We talked about that. They've been through a lot through the years. They're dealing with oppression. They're dealing with even in some internal things happening between them, some of the internal between the tribes. Um, so they need to stay near to God and continue on. Who has raised up the righteous man from the east? Called him to his foot, gave the nations before him, and made him to rule over kings. So who would rule over kings? Somebody answer that for verse number two. Who's raised up to be a righteous man from the east, called him to his foot, gave the nations before him, and made him to rule over kings. Who do you think that would be in this type of scenario? Anybody? Babylon. Okay. So Babylon, he gave them as the dust to his sword and as a driven stubble to, to his bow. Anyone else? And then we'll get into why you think Babylon. Well, it can also be Persia too because they are the ones that will uh, take over and succeed Babylon and they will be the ones to free Israel to return. Okay. Anyone else? So there's a lot there. So there's some of this that looks like, let's continue on and then we'll get back to it. He pursued them, he pursued them and passed safely, even by the way that he had not gone with his feet. Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? So who called the generations from the beginning? I the Lord the first, and with the last, I am he. So number four kind of explains it. So it walks into hey, here's some things that has happened. Here's some things that you have seen kind of through the years. But through this whole time, me as me, God, me, Jesus, me, the Lord, I've been there that entire time. So what's going to happen in first in chapter 41, we're going to talk about the helper of Israel, which is the Lord, kind of going through some of what God is to Israelites, and then in chapter two, we'll get in a little deeper with some of his, uh, and chapter one, we'll get in a little deeper with some of his characteristics, and then in chapter 42, we'll talk a little bit more about actually the, the ministry of Jesus Christ, okay? So this is kind of setting the groundwork for, for Jesus and what God does in their life. 
If you jump down to verse 10, we've talked about it. This is one of the verses that a lot of people are aware of. Um, so somebody do 41 verse 10, and then we're going to backtrack a little bit and talk a little bit about verse 8 all the way through verse 19. And then we'll have kind of like a little activity interaction there. So somebody read verse 4110 for us. I'll do it. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's an awesome verse. Mm -hmm. So in that verse, there's a couple things that come out, and, and I want to hear, hear your, your thoughts to it. So I'm going to give each, each person one verse. I want you to read that verse, okay? We're going to take a moment, and we're all going to report out and talk a little bit about how God pre presents himself to us, okay? So I'm just going to go left to right on my screen, okay? So, Kimberly, I'm going to give you 41 verse 8, okay? Read okay. that, and then I'm going to have you report out, okay? Joseph, I'm going to give you... Isaiah 41, verse 9. Okay? Read that. I'm going to have you report out here momentarily. Okay? We just read verse 10. Who is that? Jan, you read that? Okay? So you're going to report out on verse 10. Okay? I'm going in order, but that threw me off a little bit. Okay? Then I'm going to have verse 11. Pastor King, you take on 41.11. Ms. Jackson, and you can have verse 12, verse 13, I have Nathaniel, and then 15, we'll go to, what do I got, 15, I'll go to Rick, Mr. Hanger, and then I have 16, Myron, okay? Those are the verses. So just take one moment to read your verse. And then here is what I want you to talk about, okay? How does God present, present himself to us or what type of God, what's his personality showing in that verse to us? Because this is what he's trying to reveal to the Israelites through Isaiah's words. Did you give me 13 or 14? Sorry to be that guy, but... <laughs> 13, 13, give 13. Me 13, all right. <laughs> Good. And there's more. I think I went up to 16. I'll give somebody 17. Who wants 17? Who hasn't had something? I'll give it to Mike. You do 17. I know you're a little delayed. We'll do you last. Okay. So we're about to report out. We've got a lot of meat here. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of stuff. So this is how God, and remember the, remember the title, Fear Not. So how does this, we'll talk about how this plays into whether we fear or not. So let's start with verse 8. Okay. So Kimberly, you had that. So how is God presenting or showing himself to us in verse 8? Let me read it. Um, I don't know if we have time to read it for everybody, but go okay. ahead. Go ahead and read it. Go but ahead and read you, it. Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham, my friend. Okay. So how is he presenting himself to us through that? To me, he's he's been uh, he's chosen me. Um, it's a personal okay. uh, thing that he's coming across. And What's uh, the, that's good. What's the last word there? And he looks at me as his friend. Mm -hmm. How? <laughs> How is he relating to us in that scripture? Mm -hmm. As a friend. And, 
Right. But how think about what a friend, how does a friend, somebody chime out real quickly, how a friend relates to you, not an acquaintance. There's a big difference between an acquaintance and a friend. Mm -hmm. And we'll move a little faster here, but I just wanted to read this first verse to kind of get you in the thought process. So how does a friend relate to us? Different than an acquaintance. I'll start off. You can trust a friend, right? Mm -hmm. A confidant. A friend has your best interest where acquaintance won't, mm -hmm. right? Your friend usually can help. You can call them anytime, any time of day. Hey, can you help me? I'm stuck on the corner. That's somebody you'll call at three in the morning. Yeah. You won't call other people, mm -hmm. right? They're always there. Mm -hmm. You have fun doing things with them. So just some things about a friend. That's God. Okay, let's go to nine. We won't read the scriptures, but let's just put together kind of what, how God's presenting himself to, to the Israelites here of why he wants them or not. So he's a friend. What's, what points out to you in verse nine? Joseph, we won't in read all the scriptures, in, but just see what points out to you. Yeah, I'm off mute. In verse nine, he refers to me as a servant. He says, I've took you from the ends of the earth, from its farthest corners. I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you, and you have not rejected me. So, I don't know. I'm a little confused. If I'm, if, as you said, Carlton, it starts out with being his friend, but now his servant. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm under understanding the context of servant in the time frame of Isaiah. So, so here's the key here of how he's showing him a friendly way there. He has chosen us, right? He could have chose anybody else, but he chose me to be, to serve and to be in line and to be in his sphere of influence. So I was chosen. And then he says, he moved us. He cast us away. He got us out of harm's way. So he's moving us and also chose us. Chosen right? so that's we're a friend and we're chosen and he moves us into better places out of some of where we're at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just a thought setting the groundwork. We we'll have to move a little quicker. Move it over to you, Ken. What do you got for verse 10? You gave me verse 10. I didn't hear that. No, you gave me verse 10. <laughs> no, that, Jan. Oh, no, no, that's right. I jumped around. I told you that may mess me up. I, I, I set the disclaimer ahead of time. You All did. right. Dan, you're right. <laughs> okay. In this verse, it talks about um, how he will strengthen us and help us, and he will uphold us with his righteous hand. To me, it means that he's powerful, um, that he he will take care of us. You um, got it. Okay. Right on. So he says, I am God, right? I'm. He mentions that he's God. So what is what the first thing you think about, I think about with God, omnipotent omnipresent, omniscient, mm -hmm. right? All knowing, all powerful. Um, he has all that, you know, and he's everywhere. So that's who we're connected with. Amen. Fear not. Amen. All right, let's go. Who we got? Verse 11. I'm going to have to move a little quicker. Who has verse 11? Did I give 11 to somebody? I don't know. Verse 11. I have got their mic on. Who did I give 11 to? Maybe I didn't. So in, in verse 11, he wants to, us to people to hold each other accountable. Mm -hmm. There's accountability and rely on his accountability. Who had verse 12? Right? Verse 12. I see that here. Verse 12, um, he talks about God's our defender. So he'll uh, remove our enemies from us. Fighter battles for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Uh, that reminded me of the song. When I was reading that, Nathaniel's all over. Over. I went to the enemy's camp and I took back. I know I don't have any sand. <laughs> but he stole from me, right? Yep. That's it. Um, or, or let God, what is that? Let, let God arise and the enemies be scattered. Let God arise, something like that. Okay. Enemies be scattered. Yep. There you go. 
I won't, I won't have you suffer more through my, my sound and my singing. But those are some of the things that come up. So he's going to scatter our enemies. So fear not. So he's given all these, why am I saying this? This is the background, and we're going to have to move a little quicker. This is the background. This is moving into what God is telling these Israelites of, hey, I'm there for you. Here's some things that I've done. This is my personality. This is how I am. So don't forget that. Yeah. And how oftentimes do we forget it? Me often. Yeah. <laughs> right? Me often. All right, let's go to 13, right? That'll A lot of me. Right. Uh, 13, I see God as a parent. I'll hold your right hand, say to you, do not fear, I'll help you. Uh, so I see God uh, kind of taking that, that parent figure, that, that comforting, caring parent there you go. that's willing to, to pick you up and help you along, grab you by the hand. Yep. So when you're holding somebody's hand, you're doing two things. Like Nathaniel said, you're comforting and you're also guiding and leading okay. simultaneously. So that's what he's there for. Or to do. So who have 15? We're moving on. I do. See, I will make you into a threshing sledge or like a combine, new and sharp with many teeth. You will thrash the mountains and crush them and reduce the hills to chaff. Hmm. How are okay. Sort of like uh, making an interstate highway through the mountains. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff there. So so that has to do with the grain. And, you know, he's, he's, he's kind of talking about, you can use it as an, an instrument to separate the grain and to till the farmland and also an instrument for war. But the ultimate, go the ultimate thing that he kind of displays there is what? We're victorious, we're an overcomer and prosperous through that, tying into God. Amen. That's good. Be All right, let's, let's do, who are we got? 16, then we'll jump along. Who had 16? I'll read. Oops, okay. that's me. No, he, th th um, these have been assigned, so go, go ahead and nobody you got You will it. winnow them. The wind will pick them up, and a gale will blow them away. But you will rejoice in the Lord and glory in the Holy One of Israel. Okay. We'll see action. The action, he sounds like he's getting rid of the enemy. Yeah. Reduce the you're scattering your enemies. There you go. Like yeah. and the last, the last one, real quick. Then I'm gonna jump on. I'm gonna have to kind of summarize the rest of this chapter so we can get through some of the other stuff. Um, Mike, you're muted. Again, just in case you didn't notice huh? that, I figured I'd jump on that and let you know. Yeah, I just was looking at it. 17. It's looking a little slower than I expected. That's okay. 17. Mike, you'll need to unmute yourself again. We had 17. Uh, All right, is that better? There he is. That's better. Go ahead. Mike. All right. 17, the way I see it is that God of Israel is not going to forsake any of us. Yeah. And he provides our needs. It, that kind of ties into uh, Philippians 4, 19, right? Yeah. And God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Um, there's a... There's a requirement there that people forget. That's a whole nother sermon. <laughs> He'll supply all our needs. That's what most people end with, right? They forget according to his riches and glory part, which is there's some requirements around that. All right, so so the base of all this really, and I could have read it off, but I want an interaction to move a little quicker, is that this is what God is presenting to the Israelites as he's as through Isaiah, his uh, prophetic words and his speaking of, hey, don't forget about who I am. In verse 18, it talks about supplying them with blessings and giving them excessive, you know, over and above what you can ask and think, uh, excessive things above their needs. And in verse 19, it talks about, hey, I'm going to help you plant. So it talks about all the, the dry lands 
and how we're going to have plant some things in the dry lands. Well, that's miraculous. If I'm going to plant in something dry, that means it was a dry land. It was barren. It was, it was not useful, but now I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to miraculously heal it spiritually, emotionally, and physically and help growth happen, you know, in the land. Um, the, the end of this chapter, so I have to move quick, 21, 24 through 25 and 29. Um, we're remembering that God, what God has done before. He talks for us to remember through verses 21 through 24. And then he talks a little bit about um, how the people, this is important, how the people had relied upon their idols, but their idols fell them. They don't warn them. They don't speak. They don't do any type of miracles. Um, so this is kind of how the end of that chapter. We'll jump to 42. So we're going to move kind of quickly. Um, verses 1 through 3 is important here. Verses 1 through 3 talks about, and I would have somebody read it. Normally it was It's referencing the Trinity, God talking, the Spirit, and the Messiah on verses 1 through 3. Um, Two through three really refers to his gentleness. So I have somebody read quickly verses 42, two through three. Yeah, hey, I'll read them. He will be gentle. He will not shout or raise his voice in public. He will not crush those who are weak or quench the smallest hope. He will bring full justice to all who have been wronged. Okay. Yay. So that's interesting, isn't it? What he's talking about there. But it's kind of the opposite of what you'll hear later um, when he's talking about in verses 13 through 15. It kind of shows another side of Jesus. So I'm going to jump ahead real quick to compare these two. Somebody read verses 42, 13, and 15. I got it. The Lord advances like a warrior. He stirs up his zeal like a soldier. He shouts, he roars aloud, he prevails over his enemies. I have kept silent from ages past. I have been quiet and restrained myself, but now I will groan like a woman in labor, gasping breathlessly. I will lay waste mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn rivers into islands and dry up marshes. So think about this. So first it talks about his meekness and gentleness. You know how he's coming, and then he talks in thirteen and fifteen. He's he's kind of changed. and says, "Okay, hey, I'm no longer going to be quiet to people that aren't doing what they're supposed to do. People are going to reap some of the punishment, right? He's going to show some of his power and wrath toward the evil doers during that time." So it talks about two through four is gentleness, but also talks about him coming out with some wrath against some of the evil doers during this time. Um, there's some, some things that were fulfilled in, in verses 6 through 7. Those are some of the predictions that were fulfilled. Um, also, verse 5, the Holy Spirit came. That's fulfilled. One of the things that hasn't been fulfilled yet is in verse 4, when he will bring the law to the world, and that's later on when he comes back down to the earth to reign for those thousand years. Okay. Any, any thoughts or comments on that? Yeah, and then you have verse um, uh, 8, 9, 8 and 9 that are exciting because I think we're coming into new seasons. Of yep, new so this, those are the next two I have. 42.8 is good. Jehovah is the name that express God. So, so let's read. Go ahead and read 8. Okay, I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place and new things I declare before they spring into being, I announce them to you. Amen. Amen. That's, That's huge. We're in That's on the sequence. Yeah. So he's, he's causing a check to what? Who is he? Who is he kind of checking in that? It starts with this. It starts with the lowercase g. The idols, other gods. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, idols and other gods. 
So he's kind of checking them in there, right? And reminding the Israelites of who they should be serving and not to come in to the same type of culture that's around them in Babylon at this point in time. And then nine, what, what is somebody seeing in nine? The past is past and the new is come. Okay. We want to declare new things. Yeah. Okay. So he's saying, hey, look at what I've done in the past. Look at what's happened. But I'm always doing something new. I'm just summarizing it. And he's saying, okay, I'm also going to address some of these things, and Isaiah does, in some more predictions and prophetic words, and I'm going to declare some things that are going to happen. Yeah, and in that time, uh, that king, you know, Hezekiah and that, that range, they'd already seen some prophecies come true about Assyria and some of that by this point as Babylon's now coming through. So I think God's yeah. referencing some prophecies that – he knew they knew had already come to, come to pass. So mm -hmm. that should be basis for even uh, a greater respect for his authority to declare new events. Yeah, that is good. So let me, let me finish this 42 off. So appreciate the comment there because for our time. Um, so in, in 42, two to 41 versus 42, 13 through 14, we talked about it. it, even comes up again in verse 41. We talk about his enemies, you know, um, we already know that he will show himself gentle and kind to the poor and weak and those that he loved, and then try and take care of the, the enemies and those that are against him. Yeah. Um, verse 20 to 25, God honoring his law, even though people reject it and they were disobedient. So what he's saying is, hey, I'm going to stay to what I said I'm going to do. I'm going to stay to what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to stay the same characteristics that he kind of laid out to us in the previous chapter, even though other people aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Okay. So one of the things I want two scriptures to read in Isaiah 43.1 and 43.5. Who wants to read 43, 1, 43, 5? So now, Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Okay. Verse 5. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will gather you and your children from east and west. That's huge. Mm -hmm. So what is he saying through that to you? Somebody, somebody, what, what is he saying through that? Well, they've been in exile. And uh -huh. he promises that they will return. But they return again. I mean, they, they return in the time of Cyrus. And they're going to return again in 1948. And so these have a double meaning. They have a lesser meaning when they come back from Babylon. And you, you see all these scriptures, how the dry, parched land. Well, since 1948, Israel has completely transformed the environment yeah. by planting trees, by irrigation, uh, and you really see an explosive fulfillment in recent times as opposed to in the time of Cyrus. But there's fulfillment in both. And that's the way prophecy is. It, it can be fulfilled numerous times. Yes, it can. And you're only going to see portions of it at different times. One of the things that, that sticks out to me, and I was just like, that's kind of interesting, why is why is the Israelites being addressed by those coming from Jacob and also the name Israel? Because you have the two names. So Jacob, the deceiver, mm -hmm. becomes the prince. But 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 remember, if you go back to Genesis 35, 9. 
God says only go by Israel. Right? God says only go by Israel. So then why would he spark Isaiah? I mean, why would he spark Isaiah to say both Jacob and Israel? Just a thought. Because, um, because you have an old nature yeah. that wants to assert itself. And the redeemed nature that should be their future, their hope, Identity. what they become. But it's easy to fall back as you as you begin to to get proud, as you begin to uh, uh, start taking up other gods. Then you become Jacob again, and so they they you know they waffle back and forth. That's correct. And guess what? We do the Jacob same thing. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, chime in. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Pride comes before the fall. <clears throat> yeah, because they toss back and forth. They don't stay Israel, right? They don't stay the way that they're supposed to, the one that triumphed and wrestled with God and got blessed. Jacob means heal and the trick. And that is part of what they deal with on a reality and conforming to the world and to their capture. You know, those that captured were their capturers. Um, so they part of, they're part of Jacob and Israel, kind of like Rick was saying. So it's kind of interesting to see that when God specifically said, don't use Israel again. I mean, don't use Jacob again, only use Israel. You know? So going a little more through this chapter, um, the, Jew, the Jews become spiritually blinded and rebellious during this time. Um, but also their double meaning. So if you look through 40, and it will be good to read it 42, 18 through 25, I'm looking at, okay, the Jews and the Israelites become spiritually blinded and rebellious. But at the same time, as Jesus comes, he becomes blinded and rebellious to the culture of that day and time to in, to issue in the new kingdom and the new philosophy. So it's kind of interesting as Rick was saying, there's kind of a dual meaning as you're looking at those scriptures and reading them of what kind of shows for. Okay. That's kind of where we're at on that. Um, so I want to respect times. One of the things I want to leave you with um, is 4312. So just read from 4312, and we'll kind of end it with this for time constraints. But, but I'll read Isaiah 4312. I have declared and I have saved and I have showed that when there was no strange God among you, therefore you are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Amen. Okay. So I want to leave you with this. And there's so much meat in these scriptures. Sorry, we kind of took a little time there in the first part. Well, it almost feels unfair to have to skip through a bunch of it so quick. It's tough. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's tough. It's tough. That's why I said there's a lot of meat here. Uh, so let me read this again because I want to leave you with this. I have declared and I have saved. Okay. So think of this. So my question to you is how has God declared, saved, and proclaimed? Those are three important things, and they're kind of separate activities. He declared, he saved, and proclaimed in your life. How has he done that? I'm leaving you with this. I have declared, and I have saved, and I have showed or proclaimed, when there was no strange God among you, therefore ye are witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. So one of the platforms, and we've kind of read some of it before, he was challenging the other idolaters and said, what has your God done? So if you're going through 43 all the way from 8 to 28, um, it talks about the idolaters are called to appear and defend their idols. What have they done? You know, you can't trust them. Have they given you prophecies that come to pass? Do they have power? You know, who's going to deliver Babylon? So Isaiah is throwing out some words for, the, for them to think about, the Israelites and those who, who those other people that would listen to him, 
It's like you don't have a true God because your God hasn't done anything in mine has. So think about that. What has God done for you? Declare. How has he declared himself? How has he saved you? And how has he proclaimed or showed himself? Yeah. So let's close it with prayer. Who would like to do it? Who would like to close in prayer? Come on, somebody's got to do it besides Ken and Nathaniel. I mean. I'll do it. All right, come on. Thank you. Thank you for Father, stepping we- <laughs> Father, we thank you for this night, for time to visit with each other, but more, Lord, for time to dig in the Word and think about what it really means and think about how it applies to our lives. Um, we just thank you, Lord, for the blessings you've given us and for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, everybody. God bless you.